It seemed to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. So said Elton John about Marilyn Monroe, Princess Diana, the list goes on. But John was bigger than a mere candle. It seemed to me he lived his life like an oil rig flare stuck in a North Sea gale. Like an oil rig, he drew on huge reserves of energy, was physically quite squat, and thanks to his prodigious whiskey intake, helped prop up the economy of Scotland. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever did, continued Elton. And it's no exaggeration to say that Scotland's vast reserves of oil and gas would burn out long before John's legend is ever forgotten. Exaggeration, possibly. Sentimental nonsense, again, unwise to rule it out. But there is broad agreement that John was good. The former BBC television centre. John had a real appetite for this donut-shaped building and snaffled his way along the corridors, gorging on the opportunity as he chomped his way to the top. His big break, or mouthful, coming in 1985 with the BBC's getaway. And it needn't cost you a king's ransom. Consisting largely of John in teeming holiday resorts, sampling cooked breakfasts in blazing sunshine, the show was, like the man himself, cheap and cheerful. A great show. Terrible reviews. Saw it cancelled before the end of its run. But it alerted the BBC's early warning system to John's talent. And he was now a big, fat blip on their radar. This led to what John called his golden period. A veritable roll call of Britain's best-loved telly. Scotland's strongest man. Cash chaser. Britain's holiest hymn. Flytip squad. Britain by balloon. Gibraltar CID which is why in 2012 he was named host of new magazine show This Time, delighting us all with puns about hedgehogs being prickly. Prickly customers. <laughs> John Baskell, what was he like? Oh, what are you like? Yes, it seemed to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. The Life of John Baskell by Alan Partridge. Now, while Telly John was larger than life, Private John devoted himself quietly and without fuss or fanfare to his charitable foundation, the John Baskell Foundation. Here to tell us more about the humble work of John's foundation, the John Baskell Foundation, uh, Jenny is joined by John's brave widow, Fran Baskell. Thanks, Alan. Well, Fran, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Such a load of toss. I mean, just, um, just a bore of it too much yeah. sirloin to this colon through in the towel. Yeah. What have you got? Well, I've been on the phone to the council about the ramblers crossing your guard. Go on. They say it isn't a public footpath. Hallelujah. It's a public bridleway. What's that when it's a Well, it's, it's like a public footpath, but horses can use it too. The previous owners didn't mind it, so it fell into public convenience. What? Ooh. I wish you'd fall into a public convenience. You mean public access? Well, I quite like the idea of horses galloping across my view. Yes, because your mind's addled with Catherine Cookson. These riders don't gallop, then. They just sit on their horses eating sandwiches in my garden. You're coming across well. Good. Remember, Good. there's a vacancy here now. Then keep your voice down. His body's barely cold. Fortune favours the bold. The time is upon us. Have you ever seen The, uh, the Devil's Nanny from the film The Omen? No, why? Just you remind me of it, that's uh -huh. all. Um, try saying, have no fear, little one, I am here to protect thee. Have no fear, little one, I am here to protect thee. If you'd knocked on my door at Halloween, I would have fouled my unders. Sorry, yes. sorry. Yeah, and then given you some sweets. We are so, with several O's, excited to be here with fashionista extraordinaire Tommy Chaucer. Tommy! Hey, and excited is right, because today is all about the skirt. After two years of heavy tailoring with all manners of trouser, baby, the skirt is back. OK. So, cop a feel of these. Oh. Now, our first oh. skirt is right. a circle skirt, modelled right. by the beautiful Kirsty. Hello. Just £65. She can't be. Oh, you mean the price. Oh. And it's a skirt that's an expression of joy. It's summertime, it's good times, it's light, it's airy, and mm. it's fun. It's a happy skirt, yes. isn't it? Yeah. It's very 
elated. It's over the moon. It is. It's, it's, well, it's chuffed a bit. You can't wipe the smile off its no, face. It's billowy. Like a windsock. Like a, like a windsock. It... Or like a tent. Yes. Or, uh, a marquee. marquee. Like wedding a big, marquee, like maybe. A wedding, big wedding marquee that's not been moored properly. That's right. Uh, and, and you can see exactly what the skirt does for Kirsty's posture, the way she walks, the way she holds herself. And wow, Kirsty owns it. Really? Oh, well, thank you for bringing it in, Kirsty. I mean, she makes it work mm. for her. Oh, totally, yeah. I mean, Simon. Yes. Say something. It's got a beautiful silhouette. Yes, I mean, yes. It's a, it is a great shape. It really is. Um, I would also add that it's uh, comfortable, modest, and good for Sunday best. Useless. And it's got uh, two poppers, so you can adjust it if you do change in size or once a month, possibly. Because when a woman enters the menstrual stage of a feminine cycle, she will swell around the tummy. So let's bring oh. out our next gorgeous girl. Julia! Julia! Now, this is a Durndell skirt. Now, this I love. It's shaped like a bell, concentrated around the waist, around the hips, and this one is very on trend. It is like a stripy bell with her legs as the hammer. Feel the fabric, Simon, then talk about it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Have a oh. feel. <laughs> feel the fabric. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Decent. Yeah? yeah, exactly, and it's it's decent a decent bit of skirt. <laughs> so no, sorry, I take that back. Well, it's saying the Dolce Vita, Roman Holiday. It is. It's saying molto bene, molto bene, molto bene. Molto bene. <laughs> Not okay, that loud, you but you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's no getting away from it, Tommy. Sometimes Simon and I can be outrageous, really can. Let's look at another woman in a skirt. Our next skirt is modelled by the lovely Louisa. Oh, very curvy stripes, like she's been squeezed out of a giant tube of uh, Colgate lady paste. <laughs> and we've paired the skirt with daring red shoes that really draw the eye. And it says, I'm on the town, it says, I mean business. It says, I'm comfortable, but I'm nobody's fool. Yeah, it's saying, I'm a whirling dervish. Yes, I like to go to the office, but sometimes I like to sit on a park bench with Rivita and Philadelphia looking sad. But it's also saying, I'm happy. I like to leap in the air and sing, whoa, body form. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. It never bloody shuts up, this yeah, skirt. Well, it, is, it, 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 it <laughs> is a stripy chatterbox. It is. Good. It's a magnificent skirt. Tommy, join me at the lady. I think this, this look works for Julia, but I can also see her, perhaps with her hair up. Totally, uh, excuse like me, my this. darling. Thank you, darling. Um, maybe a shocking pink clutch bag, sleeves pushed up, LA Law style. Um, totally. Hair up, daytime casual, mm -hmm. hair down, one word, accessorise. Wrist, neck, Ears, heads, shoulders, knees, and toes. No. Nails, lots of colour, accessories where you can really let your hair down. Yeah, although I've just told you to put it up <laughs> to me. She's smiling. Earrings, maybe a couple of big hoops. Just toss your head back and shake it around. Let them clank against your neck. <laughs> Thanks, Louisa. Thanks, sweetheart. That was sensational. Alan, we're back on. With respect, Councillor, I think our listeners will be more concerned about cuts to public services. It, well, absolutely, Terry, and that's why we've set out proposals Terry, to ensure... let me take it from here, throw me the ball. Councillor, you talk a good game. I caught it, by the way. Um, but I have figures that show that you plan to cut public spending. Are you talking about the raw figures or the figures adjusted for inflation? Yes. Well, the, the first or the second? The first, the first, the first, the first, the first, well, for God's sake. In that case, that, that's wrong, because if you look at the figures, the actual spend has remained the same as last year, see? Yeah. No, I understand it. I'm just, mm. uh, just checking it. Well, it's there. Yeah, that's fine. The, uh, another area where we've seen a, a great deal of public anger is in council housing. Mm. Now, mm. what is the proposal here? No, I, mean, I meant the second, sorry. I meant, the se I meant the second one. What when, you, the... when you gave me the choice before. I meant the, I meant the, the second cho choice where the figures are adjusted for inflection. Well, Alan, we've made no secret of the fact that we're not going to keep pace with inflation. In fact, it's inflation. one of the few issues that we have cross-party agreement on, so... Um... Right. Mm. We've made no secret of the fact that we're bus, going bus, to have bus, to make... Bus fares. I'm sorry? Bus fares. Have you not put up bus fares? As we said in our manifesto, we won't be putting up bus fares in any... Ha have you put up bus fares? Not in real terms. Have you put up bus fares? In line with inflation, we have had to keep pace... Yes or no? Have you put up bus fares? 
in our manifesto... Have you... Sta- have you... Have you put up bus fares? We've only put up bus fares. Have you put up bus fares? Yes, but only yes, in as much... Yes, but you, yes, but you, yes, but yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. If you want to see that interview back online and see me getting a politician to admit something slightly different from what they said earlier and then no, saying, look, you said something slightly different from what you true. said earlier. No, and the, and uh, so, one nil. It's 10 a.m. It's just after 10 a.m. You have been listening to Alan Partridge with special guest Tory Bronwyn Matthews. Who's... Tory, Tory Councillor Bronwyn Matthews. Yeah, her, and what's your name? Terry Cohen. Terry Cohen. Uh, get well soon uh, to uh, Eddie Shadow. Shepherd. Uh, who I'm sure will get well uh, very soon. Uh, that's rhetoric and not a prognosis. Uh, right now, you're listening to Mid Morning Matters with Alan Partridge. See ya. Take a cup of personality, pour in some chat, and drink up some good company. I.e. Mid-Morning Matters with Alan Partridge. Good evening, uh, morning, afternoon. Who cares? Who gives a flying monkey? Because uh, today we're talking about things you don't see much of anymore. Uh, already we have uh, capes, tinned meat, horlicks, sparrows, hula hoops, the crisps, not the toy, uh, hula hoops, the toy, not the crisp, uh, swimming pools with deep ends and asbestos. Um, uh, we'll be asking, should we bring some and or all of them back? So do please text, uh, Twitter, spam, fax, page, write and or email. Uh, so a quick email here from Samantha who says that she has fat arms. Oh, oh, oh Samantha. I mean, a lot of people, so many of you have a fixation with physical perfection these days. It's because we're bombarded with images of size Absolutely. zero models and in Possible ideal to attain. It is abso- absolutely, uh, Samantha. I'm sure. I'm sure your arms are absolutely fine. She's um, she's got an attachment here. So, oh my God, they are vast. Th- wow. Alan. That's. Uh, but you've got a lovely face, Samantha. She's got a, she's got a lovely face. Yeah. Uh, I've got to send this to Jonathan Ross. Okay, and uh, yeah, we've got a letter here from Lucinda. Uh, Lucinda says, I'm 45, but I'm going out with a 23-year-old man. Um, we clicked straight away, but although he's very affectionate, we're yet to make love and he cannot maintain an erection. And I'm worried it's my fault. What shall I do? Well, it's actually very common in younger men, much more so than people realise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, 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 these young men look all well and good uh, in the underpant adverts, <laughs> but uh, when, it come, when they hit the hay... It's failure to launch. That, yeah, I like yeah. it. <laughs> Zoe, Zoe, come in here. What do, what do young women make of it all these days? Um, well, I suppose, I suppose it comes down to confidence, really, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Because I think a younger man can be a bit yeah. too eager to please yeah. and end up sort of at sixes and sevens. <laughs> um, but, and then a, an older man, you know, with some experience, is perhaps a bit more at ease with himself. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and of course we're very fortunate these days. We have Viagra. <laughs> yeah, but although do not exceed the stated dose. So uh, you, you've suffered from that, have you, Alan? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Well, a, a lot of men have. I mean, it's nothing to be ashamed of. All right, wh- all right, all right, once. But that was only because I had already commenced foreplay when I remembered uh, I hadn't renewed my tax disc. But um, once I put a quick call into the DVLA, uh, lovemaking could begin in anger. I think it's all about making sure the conditions are right. Mm. Getting the mood right, the atmosphere. Oh, sure. Mm. I mean, I'm not going I'm, I'm, I'm to be embarrassed about this, seeing, seeing as we're being, trying to be you know, grown up about this. There, there, there have been times when I've been more uh, rubbery than turgid. I mean, you can't just summon up uh, tumescence like room service. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I think it's, it's partly down to the woman to sort of help, help set the mood a little, Absolutely. help man relax. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I mean, it's all about mood. Uh, take the phone off the hook. Mm-hmm. Uh, put on some easy listening, Carpenters, Enya, and, of course, make sure the heating's on. OK, uh, got another email here from, uh, from Paul in Swatham on forced celebrity breeding. Um, this one is Kylie Minogue and David Dickinson to make an Oompa Loompa. Absolutely. Uh, Minogue provides the size, Dickinson provides the requisite skin tone and expression. 
Let's have some Alison Moyet. Now, this one, it's called White Diamond. Ooh. Perhaps another one of Kirsty Allsop's bridesmaids. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a drink before you came on? Mm. It's try champagne, mm. uh, lime cordial, mm. big mm. slug of Cointreau, mm. white grape juice and egg white. Mm. Like poached egg? Oh, no, no, it's raw. For God's sake, Rosie. What? You can't eat raw egg. It's a raw egg, No, it's, Rosie. A, it's a common ingredient. It's, yes. uh, sorry, just a disclaimer. Please, please don't try this at home. Rosie's attempted it here, but in controlled conditions, the first aid is on hand. Please, please, cook your eggs. Be safe. Be egg safe. Rosie, Rosie, let me pick your brain. Um, because me and my mum, we mm. always go to Queen's for the tennis. Like this one. Um, the first cocktail afternoon mm. of the summer. Mm. Uh, what would you make for that? It'd have to be a rosemary champagne fizz. Oh. So gin, grapefruit and champagne. It's, it's, it's English, it's fun, it's summer. Those are the new cocktails, but what about the classics? Rosie, what do you think is the most popular cocktail in Britain? Espresso martini. Alan, what do you think? Mine's gone blank, shandy. Well, uh, we hit the streets of Nottingham to find out which came out on top. And we're off. Oh, really, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Smells of stuffing. Oh, it's you. Just to say, I've looked into the annual report. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it turns out Jenny earns slightly more than you. Okay. Okay. It's to do with the way the deal is structured. It's an accounting quirk. Okay. It's only about two hundred pounds, but it just means she's higher than you in the list of the BBC's best paid presenters. Okay. Okay. You okay? Okay. Uh, okay. I'm okay. Okay. So you're in a bit of a pickle. You want more, but you don't want to complain mm. because women have got a bit big for their boots. Yeah, all right, Lynn, that's, that's for the car, but thanks for the intel. Have a white sparkle. OK, Thank places, you. people. You like egg, don't you? And we're back in five, four... So, there we have it. The mojito is Britain's favourite cocktail. And, Rosie, you're making us one to end the show. I am. Now, the secret to a good mojito is not to overdo the mint. Mm -hmm. So, it's lime juice, sugar, a little mint. They're already in the shaker. Go on, make it, And, then. yes, a handful of ice and a good slug of rum. Oh, I love rum. And then you give it a good shake. Stop looking at me. <laughs> Certainly gave that what for. And would you like to have a go, No, Alan? not me. I never know where to look when I do that sort of thing. It requires a certain kind of confidence. That, for whatever reason, I don't have. That's why I don't play the maracas. Give it here. Right. <laughs> stiff. It's loosening. Very stiff. Have you got it? All right. <laughs> okay. Take me take it. <laughs> 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 I don't know why I did that. Rosie, thank you very much for joining us. That was great. It was great. It was really great. What are you doing my jacket? Sorry for bollocking you before about the raw egg thing. But don't do that again. Oh, and I believe Simon has an email. Simon. Simon.